Hello and welcome to Mac Nirvana, your path to digital harmony. So far we've looked at the layout of the Mac workspace, which is made up of three areas, the menu bar, the desktop, and the dock. We've also spent some time examining the dock. Today we're going to start working with the menu bar. Now the menu bar is this area up here at the top of the screen. The menu bar is separated into two basic areas. To the left we have a series of menus that contain commands and functions. And to the right we have a series of menus that deal with info and settings. Let's start with the info and settings. Now here we can see the time, maybe your name, and a series of icons. When you use your mouse or trackpad to click on one of these icons, you'll see a menu drop down, which will reveal settings and adjustments you can make to your computer. Here's an icon for a speaker, and depending on how loud your volume is set, the speaker will have sound waves coming out of it. When you click on the speaker icon, a menu drops down, presenting us with a volume slider. With your mouse or trackpad, you can click on the slider and adjust the volume coming out of your computer speakers. If you click on this icon here, which represents your Wi-Fi or wireless internet connection, you'll see a list of Wi-Fi networks that your computer currently sees. This is not a list of every Wi-Fi network that you've ever used, but only the ones that are currently in range of your computer right now. Here we have the Bluetooth connection. If you're using an iMac, you'll see your keyboard and mouse here. If you have a notebook, you may not see anything at all here. This menu may actually be grayed out. Now, this circular arrow with clock hands is related to Time Machine. Time Machine is the software that Apple builds into every Mac to make backing up your data really easy. If you're not using Time Machine, we need to talk. Now you have time, and if I click on the time, it'll actually drop down a menu that will present me with the date. Now at the bottom of the time list, we see a shortcut to the time and date preference where you can make adjustments to the overall time and date on your computer. The time and date preferences themselves we're going to cover in a future tutorial explaining system preferences. On my computer here, the next thing you see here is the words Mac Nirvana. Now this is because this is the account that I'm currently logged into on my computer. When I click on it, I can see a list of other users on the computer. If you have the only account on the computer, or your computer set up to require a logout in order to switch users, you won't see this. Now this is okay, there's nothing wrong with your Mac. It's designed to be customized, and mine's just set up differently than yours. Now there's this magnifying glass, and when you click on it, you're presented with an empty field. But notice this blinking line here. This is the computer's way of telling us that this field is designated to receive text, and it's ready for us to type. Spotlight is a search function on the Mac. I can simply start typing, and Spotlight begins to list matches. If I type a name, it shows me contacts in my address book, people I've emailed, or who have emailed me, documents that contain that name somewhere within that document, songs by an artist or songs that have that name in its title, photos that I may have tagged. It even gives me the option to search the internet. Whoa, this is a lot of information. Anyone feeling a bit overwhelmed? It's okay. Let's talk about this tool for a moment. Have you ever thought that you had a document right there on your desktop and yet you still can't find it? Or you know you got an email from somebody but you can't remember when they sent it and you're just not seeing it in your inbox. Type the name of the file, the person's name, the topic, or as close as you can come to it and Spotlight will begin to display everything on your computer that might be that missing document or email. This is a tool for finding stuff. So when you're super frustrated looking for something on your computer, take a deep breath, click on Spotlight, and type what you're looking for. All right, let's take a look at the left side of the menu bar. These menus provide access to the commands and functions of the apps that you use. If I need a new folder, I go to the File menu, I click on the word File, a menu drops down, from there I highlight and click on the word New Folder. But it's important to know that I have to be in what's called Finder in order for the new folder command to be present within the file menu. You see, the contents of the menus change depending on which application you're currently working in. I'm going to move my cursor arrow to the dock here, 
and with a single click I'm going to launch Safari, the web browser. When I go back to the file menu, new folders no longer an option, because creating new folders isn't related to surfing the internet. Also here, notice I have more menus in the bar. Bookmarks weren't there before, nor was history. Now if I go back to the dock and click on Finder, bookmarks and history go away. Safari allows you to use bookmarks to return to the websites that you've visited in the past. Finder doesn't visit websites at all. Now a common question is, if these things just change, how do you find the command you're looking for? You want to get in the habit of looking at the upper left hand corner of your screen where you'll see the name of the app that you're currently working in. So if you're in Safari, but you want to create a new folder in which to store a file, you have to go back to Finder. Once you're back in Finder, the file menu will offer you the new folder command as we've seen previously. This can feel complicated and slow at first, but as with anything, practice will make you quicker in a very short time. In the meantime, make it a habit to look in the upper left hand corner to confirm which app you're currently working in. Now we can't get into all the possibilities of every single menu. So when we're working in particular apps, we'll look at those menus at that time. So let's focus in on the highlights of the Finder menus. Working right to left, help comes up first. This is actually a helpful place to go. Let's say you want to create a new folder, but you forgot where the command was located. Well, let's click on the word help, and just like Spotlight, a box drops down with a field ready to receive text. So let's just type the word folder. Help brings back a whole list of options. You actually get two types of results here. The first are menu items, and then help topics. Now if you move your mouse over the menu items, the Mac will actually show you which menu those commands are located. Now if you wanted some directions or information about folders, you'd select the help topic that's closest to the question you have. So here we see folder basics. Highlight it, click it once with your mouse or trackpad, the Mac will actually open up this help window here, which will provide you with either step-by-step -step directions or just further explanation on particular topics. We'll take a look at how to best utilize the help function in future videos but you should give it a try when you have questions. Next up is the window menu. Now this really is just gonna provide you with a list of currently open windows. You'll see a few extra settings in here, but its main purpose is to switch from one window to the next. Moving to the left, we see the Go menu. Now Go is a list of shortcuts. If you need to get to your documents or applications folder, Go is super fast. You also have a list of recent folders, which can be really helpful if you aren't sure where you've been recently. Next up, view allows us to set how files are presented. Do you want a list of names? Would you like a collection of icons? Or my personal preference, column view. Now we'll get into these views in more detail when we start talking about navigating the finder and the structure of your computer, but for now, really just play with it. Next up, we see something called arrange by. Put your cursor over the words arrange by. Don't click, just highlight it. Notice it turns blue and we get a sub menu that pops up. Here we can sort by name, the kind of file, the date that file was added to the computer, or the date that that file was last modified. Now view options here at the bottom is a good one. Highlight it and click it once with your mouse or trackpad. You get a new window that allows you to change the size of the icons on your desktop or in any open windows. You can also change the size of the font displayed on your files. This could be particularly helpful if you're finding them hard to read. Next up is the Edit menu. Edit is where you're going to find classics like Copy, Cut, Paste, and Undo. Now some of these commands will remain the same within the Edit menu regardless of which application you're in. Nearly every app can make use of Copy, Cut, Paste. Going back to Safari here, when you look at the Edit menu, you see Copy, Cut, and Paste right here. But also, there are some Safari specific things within this Edit menu. Autofill Form is one. So even if the menu name stays the same, not every app will have the same commands within that menu. Most often, if you're not finding the command you're thinking of, it's generally because you're not in the app that offers that command. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the file menu here. Now it's gonna contain a lot of the same commands that are gonna be the same from app to app. Print, save, open, close. But even those are not always the same. Let's take a look at iPhoto. When we go to the file menu, when we're in iPhoto, there is no save command. This is because iPhoto saves everything automatically for us as we're working. 
Now we do see print. We also get some iPhoto specific commands like new book or new card. Now if we go back to Safari and look back into the file menu, now we see a save as, this is because websites aren't actually stored on your computer. But save as can allow us to save aspects of a web page for viewing offline. Now we see print again, we see new window, we see new tab, but we don't see new book or new card. This is because while Safari can show us pictures that are on the internet, it doesn't actually edit pictures or store pictures, and it does not create books or cards. Now the next menu is called the application menu. It's the name of the application you're currently working in. Here you're going to find settings specifically for that app. In Safari we see preferences, and these preferences apply only to Safari. This is where you can set things like a home page, which search engine you would prefer to use, along with things like privacy and security settings. In the application menu, you're always going to find the quick command. Now, let's look at the finder menu. Again, we've got preferences, but we also find things like empty trash. Finder is the one application you can't quit, so it's the only one that's not going to have a quit function within there. Without Finder, there's no desktop or windows. And without it, you'd have to do everything by typing commands, or what's known as command line. And that's a whole different set of training. Now, the menu to the very far left is called the Apple menu. Now, I know it looks just like a bit of branding, but this is a menu. And it's the only menu that never changes, regardless of what app you're working in. The first thing we see is About This Mac. Clicking that's going to generate a window that lists some basic information about your computer. What version of the operating system your Mac's currently running, the type and speed of processor that's installed in your Mac, and how much RAM or memory is installed. Now the next thing we see is software update. By default, this is set to run every two weeks, but if for some reason this setting has changed on your Mac, this is where you would go to make sure all your Apple software is up to date. App Store is for going out and buying software directly from Apple. Next up, System Preferences. This is how you adjust how your computer is set up and how it behaves. Now, System Preferences is going to be a video or two all on its own. For now, take some time to look around, but click with caution. If you're not sure what a setting does, please feel free to contact me. The next item in the menu, the dock, we actually looked at in the last video. Now, Force Quit is used when an app stops responding. For Windows users, this is very similar to end task. If you have an app that isn't responding and is just stalled out on you, go ahead and select force quit and go ahead and quit it. Now we see sleep, restart, and shut down. And they do just what they say. If you're wondering if you should put your computer to sleep or shut it down, it really depends on your computer and its components. If you have a laptop with a standard hard drive, you really do want to shut it down every time you change locations. If you have a MacBook Air or the newer MacBook Pro with a solid state drive, sleep is good. It's actually perfectly fine. On the desktop, take your pick. Just be sure to restart it from time to time. Lastly, log out. It just leaves the user that you're currently working in. Now this is really only used if there's multiple users sharing the same computer or you have your data and work separated, as I do here. My professional work is stored under my Mac Nirvana account, and all my personal data is stored under an account under my name. Listen, I know this is a lot to take in and incorporate. Don't try and memorize it all right now. These videos, they're here for you, and they're going to stay here. Come back to them, review them as you need, and work on this stuff a little bit at a time. You really want to start trying to build habits and even muscle memory in regards to these functions. Now, if you have specific questions or topics that you'd like to be covered, contact me and let's figure out the best way to get you the information you're looking for. If you would like to continue growing in knowledge and confidence with your Mac or other Apple products, please email MacNirvana at info at MacNirvana.com. We provide individualized training both in person and live over the web. We also offer group and business training as well as consulting. Visit us on the web at www.macnirvana.com for more details. For Mac Nirvana LLC, this is Rob reminding you that commands are just a click away.